plan not to be very long this morning. Uh, as I studied this lesson and looked at it, you know, it just seems like the, the Holy Spirit directed me in this way. Uh, this is, to me, this lesson this morning is taking us back to the basics, to our foundation of our belief this morning. It is uh, Christianity, Christianity 101, if you will. It's um, Paul in the first, these epistle letters to Rome, he's in Corinth writing them and sending them to Rome. In these first three or four chapters or epistles, he drives home the point without a shadow of a doubt that we all sinners, every single one of us, we sinned, we came short. It don't matter uh, who we are or what we are or anything about it, we're all sinners. And then he came and said, he didn't leave us there. No. He gave us hope. He said, though we're sinners and though we've all sinned, and though we're all uh, have sinned against God. He said that we could be justified yeah. by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. No matter how bad you think you've been or how much sin is in your life, no matter how far you've gone, he said the blood of Jesus Christ, he drives home the point that we're not, we don't have to be lost in our sins, that we can, through G the blood of Jesus Christ, we can be justified or reconciled back to God yeah. through his blood and through the sacrifice yeah. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So he's writing this letter this morning, or then he sends this letter because he's dealing with two groups of people. And he's confronting these two groups of people. One group is the Jewish people, the Judaism, they're trying to force the law on the Gentiles that being born again is saved. They're trying to say that they have to do the work of the law. They have got to be circumcised. Uh -huh. They got to do follow the law. They're trying to say it's by the works that they have salvation. And then there's another group. There's another group there is saying, well, because of grace, because of grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, we can live any way we want to live. Do whatever we want. We can get forgiven. They're trying to abuse the grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In fact, as foolish as it sounds, scholars says many of that day thought the more they sinned, the more sin they had, the more grace God would give them. And so Paul is answering that question this morning and his very first sins. He asked them a question. He said, what shall, what shall we say then? Question. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall we continue to sin over and over and over? Willfully sin just so we can get forgiven and get more grace from our Lord and Savior Christ. What did he say? He said, God forbid it. Right. No way. He said, then he went on, he said, how shall we that are dead in sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized unto Jesus Christ were baptized unto his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death that Christ, like, that like Christ <laughs> was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. And this is what I want to talk this morning, the basics of our Christianity. There's a lot of folks that got baptized and Richard, they really didn't even understand what they were doing. Right. A lot said, well, they know Jesus commanded us to do it. They know we should do it. They know that 
is expected of us to do it. They know that everybody does it, but they really don't fully understand what they're doing. When you give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, you are saying that you accept Christ as your Savior, you accept his sacrifice that he died on the cross at Calvary, shed his blood to cover your sins. And you're saying when you get baptized, this is my testimony, this is your testimony. This is your outward testimony that you're saying, I accepted Jesus Christ, A.B. as my personal Savior. I accept the sacrifice, the blood that he shed for my sins. I'm showing the world that as he died Come on. and was buried, I'm being baptized, I am going to a liquid grave. Uh -huh. yeah. I am going to be submerged in this liquid grave. I died out to sin. That's right. I'm buried with Christ. And just as Jesus arose from the grave in three days, yep. when they picked me up out of that watery grave, I am brand new. Uh -huh. I am a new man or woman. And I'm going to walk and I'm going to walk in the newness of life. <laughs> Paul said what's dead can't be no more. Right. Once something is dead, it's gone. Yeah. Paul said you would baptize in like Christ you're saying that I'm a brand new man. Yeah. Yeah. We find in Corinthians he wrote, therefore, if any man in Christ, if you're in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. So Paul said, if you are a new creature, if you're a new man, You've died up to your sins. How are you going to walk in them no more? They're behind you. Paul's not saying that you'll never commit another sin. Paul's not saying that you're above sin. Paul is saying that Jesus Christ will give you victory over sin. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to Sin, you're in the flesh. But Paul said, you don't live in sin. Uh -huh. Sin has no longer dominion over you. Amen. As we'll find in our later verses, it says, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. A lot of people say, well, then don't let no sin in. No. Paul said, don't let it control you. That's what reigning over you uh -huh. means. For we, have, <clears throat> for we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. We also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should serve not sin. We, we, we not serve sin. Again, that's what we're saying. Knowing that the old man, this old fleshly man, is dead. Uh -huh. We are a new creature in Christ. We're to walk in the likeness of Christ. To grow. This is how we're sanctified. This is how we grow in Christ Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. The Bible plainly says, Jesus himself said in the book of John, he said, the soul that sinned, 
is a servant to sin. And we know the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. For he is dead, is free from sin. Now, if he be dead with Christ, we believe that he shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. So Jesus died. When Jesus died and arose the third day, he took the victory over death. Death has no more dominion over Christ. He said, Behold, I'm alive forevermore. Jesus will never die again. As the old people of the Old Testament, how they came and did sacrifices over and over. They offered a sacrifice over and over and over for their sin. Jesus died once for the sins of the whole world. For every sin that was ever committed, for every sin that will ever be committed, Jesus died for those sins. They're all covered. As long as you are a Christian, as long as you've asked God to re you uh, ask for forgiveness, that one sacrifice covers it all. There's no need. He won't die again. No matter how bad you are, the most vile the sinner, Christ's blood can cover those sins. It's that simple. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. And we know he's on the right hand of the Father, and he will live forevermore, never, never die again. <laughs> he says, likewise, reckon ye also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but live unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So Paul's saying, likewise, when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, ask for forgiveness, ask him to come in and cleanse our heart, uh -huh. and we get baptized, we accept the burial, we, the, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, we do it unto God, uh -huh. we live a new life, Richard. Yeah. I don't walk the same way, I don't talk the same way, mm -hmm. I don't act the same way, I don't have the same attitude, not because myself, because I'm not living in myself no more. Right. I'm living in Christ. Not that I'm any good, not that I won't make mistakes, because I will. I make them every day. But I live my life now unto God, unto Christ. Paul said we must crucify this flesh day, every day. This flesh this outward man will wear up every single day, but we must let the inward man come off. Control us. Mm -hmm. I know this is probably boring to some, but this is our basic, <laughs> our fundamental foundation. Facts. Fundamental foundation of a Christian walk and a Christian life. Some don't understand it. But I'm not living for myself no more. I'm living under God. I am supposed to grow every day. I'm supposed to learn. And Jesus said, take my yoke upon me and learn of me. I'm supposed to try. Although I'll never be perfect. I serve a perfect Savior. I will never be perfect. But I can't use that as an excuse that I can't never be perfect. I am supposed to strive within myself to become more like Christ every day. Uh -huh. To grow in his love and his mercy. And to try to be more Christ-like. If you're not growing, if you're not moving, you're getting stale and you're going to die. He said, let sin therefore reign 
in. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey the rest of the <laughs> thereof. Neither ye, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God, those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. So what is he saying here? Don't yield your members to unrighteousness, but unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. He's saying the members, your hands, your eyes, your mouth, your feet, I can take these hands, Richard, and I can push you down. Uh -huh. Or I can take this hand and pick you up. I can take my mouth mm -hmm. and discourage you and put you down. Yep. Or I can take this mouth and give, encourage you and lift you up and pick you up right. and try to encourage you on your way. I can take these eyes and look at Richard Harrell and try to pick out every single fault I can find in. Come on, Brian. I'm yielding my members to unrighteousness. Yeah. Or I can look at Richard Harrell, have compassion on him, and try to help him and try to see the good in him and lift him up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can take these feet and run swiftly to you to push you down. Or I can see you in need and run fast to you to help you. Yes, sir. That's what Paul's saying. Don't yield your members to unrighteousness, but yield them That's good, Ron. unto righteousness. The men are members of these bodies. So, how can we do all this? How can we live this Christian life? How can we every day sin less? How can we have this outlook of and try to be more like Christ within ourselves? We can't. And Christ knew that. Jesus knows within ourselves we cannot be and live this Christian life. So he said before he left this earth, he said, I will leave you comfortless. He said, it's expedient for me to go because if I go, he will not come. But when he comes, he will lead you and guide you in what? All righteousness. And it's the Holy Spirit that we accept when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior to come in our lives, to live in our hearts, to guide our steps, to guide our direction, and help us overcome. Jesus said himself, these things I've spoken unto you, that in me, now listen to what he said. He said, these things I've spoken unto you, that in me, not in you, but it, Jesus is talking in me. You might have peace. In this world, ye shall have tribulation. He didn't say you might have them. He, smart, he didn't say trouble may come one day. He didn't say that you might one day get a problem. He said, in this world, you shall, you're guaranteed, you're going to have trouble, trials, and tribulations. It's going to happen. You're, if you live in this world, you're going to have problems. You're going to have things that come upon you. Jesus knows that. He said, you shall have them. <clears throat> He said, but be of good cheer. 
I have overcome the world. So Jesus has already overcame. Mm -hmm. He came, Zach, he lived on this earth. He faced every trouble, every trial. He told John in Revelations, he said, Behold, I'm the first and I'm the last. I'm the first one. I'm the first. I'm the, I've done it before you did. He came to this world. He overcome this world. He died on the cross of Calvary. He arose. He ascended back to the Father. And he never sinned. Not one single sin Jesus Christ ever committed. Pilate said, I can't find no fault in him. There wasn't no fault in him. He never sinned. Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have tribulations, you're going to have troubles. But don't worry. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And he has overcome the world. As the song they sung, he has. I don't know what tomorrow holds. He knows. And if he's living inside my heart, and his spirit is directing my path, <laughs> then I can overcome too. Not through myself, but through and by him. Galatians tells us that he will give us power through the Spirit, through the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus will give you power to overcome Jesus will give you power to overcome this world. See, now, it's not a sin to be tempted. The devil's going to tempt you every way he can. The devil is going to tempt you and try you and put stuff in front of you every shape, form he can. And that's not a sin. That's his sin. And only your sin or my sin when we will or will to do it, what he's trying to get us to do. Paul said, in short and sweet, God didn't save our soul. God didn't extend mercy to us. So we can live any way we want to live. God gave us grace and mercy so no matter what we've done, we're covered. You're going to sin. I'm not going to stand here this morning and say you'll never commit a sin. Because if I did, I just, li I just sinned because I lied to you. You're going to have sins. You're going to have temptations. You're going to fall short. The Bible says we, before we fall, came short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. But he's sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for me. And by his grace, Tony, by his mercy and by his grace, I'm going to strive to be do better every day for the glory of God. Bless you, Lord.